your name? How's life? I don't know. It's all right. I've been dealing with some things like every human being and really didn't sleep much last night. I'm sorry. That's fine. I just think I need a little me time. I just think I need a little free time. A little break from the shows and the bus rides. Yeah. Last year I had a breakdown. Thoughts telling me I'm lost, getting too loud. Had to see a therapist and I found out. Something funny's going on up in my house. Yeah, I started thinking maybe I should move out. You know, pack my car, take a new route. Clean up my yard, get the noose out. Hang up my heart, let it air out. Air out. I've been searching. What does that mean, Nate? I've been learning. Grabbing my keepsakes, leaving my burdens. Well, I brought a few with me. I'm not perfect. Looking at the view like... This concerns me, picking up the cues, right? I'm quite nervous, hate it when I lose sight Life gets blurry and things might hurt me It's probably gonna be a long journey, but hey, It's worth it though, cold world out there Kids, grab your coat, spend a minute I know Now I'm back to Rome, looking for the antidote To crack the code, pretty good that I admit it I'm in classic mode, the only pity given to me But I can't condone, talking down to me I'ma have to crack your nose for cracking jokes I'm looking for the map, the hope, you see that? Been making a whole lot of changes Wrote a song about that, you should play it I get scared when I walk on these stages, I look at the crowd and see so many faces yeah that's when i start to get anxious that's when my thoughts can be dangerous that's when i put on my makeup and drown in self-hatred forget what i'm saying and where the beat go oh ain't that something drums came in you ain't see that coming hands on my head can't tell me nothing got a taste of the fame and upon my stomach throw back up like i don't want it wipe my face clean off my vomit ocd trying to push my buttons i said don't touch it now y'all done it i can be critical never typical Every syllable, I'm a criminal Intimate but never political, pretty visual Even if you hate it, I make you feel like you're in it though You call me what you want, but never call me forgettable Leave you deep in dollar, can never swim in the kiddie pool Wait it, I've been thinking the cinematic is beautiful Man, I don't know if I'm making movies or music videos Videos, videos Yeah, the sales can rise, doesn't mean much though When your health declines See, we've all got something that we trapped inside That we try to suffocate, you know, hoping it dies Try to hold it underwater, but it always survives And it comes up out of nowhere like an evil surprise And it hovers over you to tell you millions of lies You don't relate to that? Must not be as crazy as I am The point of Thinking is the mind is a powerful place And what you feed it can affect you in a powerful way It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, but it's not always safe Just hang with me, this'll only take a moment, okay? Just think about it for a second If you look at your face Every day when you get up and think you'll never be great You'll never be great Not because you're not, but the hate We'll always find a way to cut you up and murder your faith I've been developing, take a look at the benefits Nothing to matter with, I can never be delicate My irrelevant, that depends on you measure it Take a measurement to back it up and give me the evidence Pretty evident, dependable, can never be tentative I'm a gentleman, depending on if I think you're genuine Pretty elegant, but not afraid to tell you to get it Etiquette. I keep it to myself when I celebrate, huh? It's that time again, but it grab your balloons and invite your friends. See, bounce back on, yeah, strap them in. Look at me, everybody, I'm smiling big. On a road right now that I can't predict. Tell me, tone that down, but I can't resist. Y'all know that sound, better raise your fist. The search begins, I'm back, so enjoy the trip, huh?
If you smell what the rock is cooking. Welcome to the WWE and that's when it's over with Rock John Dance. John Randy Smith, as we bring you our reactions to Molly in the Bank, which came at you from Fort Worth, Texas, at Dickies Arena in front of live crowds. Yes, the fans are back. Everyone say, you know everyone say, hallelujah. Yes, it's quite hard to do again. That is until the county decides to F itself up again. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But who knows? But Hopefully this is the end of COVID-19. And the end of the Thunderdome. So we'll start things off well, with the pre-show. Before we get into the... Uh, Actual matches, we will uh, mention how overall, at least for live crowds in attendance, were, I would say, satisfied with how the show went. Unfortunately, the same could not be said for those fans watching on Peacock in the United States. No, they were suffering from major lag and buffering due to significant technical difficulties during the show. Ma However, for those of us in the UK, nothing was wrong. Those difficulties mainly took place in the entrance portion of the men's money in the bank ladder match, but this is not the first and I highly doubt it will be the last problem that uh, people have been having since the WWE Network merged with Peacock. No. And if this continues, I cannot see this pattern to blast them for very long. Now we'll move on to our first match of the night, which was a, our pre-show match, which took place on the kickoff. And oh. the Uso Quick note. Quick note also. As we go on through this show, we will touch on the minimum of three matches which have been set up for SummerSlam. Yes, as well. You have mention as well. Yes, but so, on the police show, the Usos, despite one of them having a recent DUI, yes, <laughs> oh. 
challenged the Mysterios for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. This match was around 11 minutes in length. Yes, and in typical Uso style, we had a uh, instance where Jay would uh, hit Mysterio with a super kick in midair and perform the Superfly Splash, only to get a near fall. But then they would go for the 6 or 9 on Jay, only for Jimmy to jump up and take the shot instead, allowing Jay to roll up Rey Mysterio. And with a little bit of assistance from Jimmy, providing some leverage, was able to pin him to pick up the SmackDown Tag Team titles for a fifth time, which I believe equals or breaks the New Day's record, and their seventh Tag Team title overall in WWE. So, congr- so it just goes to prove that having them doing a DUI can get you rewarded for championships. Yes, but when you look at the, lo- the larger picture, if they punished, I think it was Jimmy, no, it was Jay, whichever one is married to Naomi in real life. I think it's Jay. Was, if they if they if they punished one of those, it would have severely affected the long term booking of the Roman Reigns storyline, which has developed now with all of them holding titles at the moment, at least. And con- also considering the way that this match ended, and what happened in the main event. We do not believe that the issue is dealt with between these two teams, and there may be a possibility of a rematch, either on an episode of SmackDown or at Money at SummerSlam. Yes. Now we move on from the actual card, and we go Yes, as we suspected, as we as we suspected when we did our pre-show, they opened Money in the Bank with one of the Money in the Bank ladder matches. This one being for women's Money in the Bank. And the contestants, well, should we say the participants, shall we say, in this match were Asuka, who won the match last year. Feeling the glow of Naomi. Little Miss Alexa Fiendus Bliss. Selena Black, I mean Vega. <laughs> yeah, I you did that. And the SmackDown, the women's tag team champions of Natalia and Tamina, along with Nikki Cross, or as she is known now, Nikki A.S.H. Which stands for almost a superhero. Spoiler alert, she might actually be a superhero now. <laughs> so this match kicks off with most of the women falling in the ring, apart from Alexa Bliss, who just stood on the second row, not moving. Yes, uh, Alexa Bliss did some of her mind, mind control. Yeah, she tried levitating, she tried pulling down the briefcase, which wasn't good on, with, with her force powers. Did she, what did she mean here? Is she in Star Wars? Then she, uh... Oh, basically, uh, mind-controlled Selena Vega. Get off the ladder. Then, we, then Natalia Lentamina... Played the defense very well. They did. They did it for most of the match. I mean, this is a still a fairly new concept having the women in this match, and I have to admit this match was a bit sloppy. But maybe fifteen minutes in, like overall, but 
towards the end of the match, we had Alexa Bliss go in for the briefcase. Originally pulled out of the ring. And dumped under a number of ladders. Literally buried under the ladders. At this point, Nikki, Nikki Ash was uh, taken out near the announced position. And then the five, was it? Yeah, the five other women started crawling on the ladders. That yes, everyone, everyone was on top of the ladder trying to get the briefcase down and fighting uh, amongst each other. When, in almost super speed, Nikki Ash climbs up the ladder above everyone and Grabs her briefcase. Literally going, da, 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 excuse me, ladies, I'll just uh, take, that. take that briefcase. <laughs> so, Nikki Orphus, the superhero, is now Miss Bunny in the back. The question was, how long would she hold to, onto it? And we. We'll later. Were, yes, we will. Now, the second match on the card was basically a filler match. As AJ Styles and Omos defended their Raw Tag Team Championships against Eric and Ivar, the Viking Raiders. Now, we're not going to spend too much time on this because the winners of this match are fairly obvious. AJ Styles and Omos. Omos during the match kind of botched his moves. And. And because of a six-man tag team win on Raw, next Raw on Monday, we will have a rematch between these two teams for the Raw Tag Team Championships. Now, personally, due to how the Tag Team Championship matches were played out, I personally would probably have switched the Raw Tag Team Championship match and the Smack Team down tag team championship match around and had the raw one on the pre show. But hey ho, that's where it came out on the card. Speaking of coming out, well the next match was for the WWE Championship as the almighty WWE champion Bobby Lashley in their Venus corner and this championship against Kofi Kingston on the new day. Yes, with zero Xavier Woods around. Now yep. Zero. This match, how do I say? Mostly one sided. I am glad to say that it was not quite as bad as uh, when Brock Lesnar faced Kofi for the championship and beat them in like four seconds. The match in total was seven minutes long. With like 95% of it being dominated by Lashley, who would do three. to dominate us before finally locking in for Hurt Lock. Or some Kofi Kenton, no mistake. But then, now we come to the first of our SummerSlam. Set up matches is after the match. Bobby Rashley sent out a tweet basically saying, Untouchable, who's next? Then, on, uh, then, uh, then on Raw, there was an open challenge in which Keith Lee made his return for the first time since February. To, in a good but losing match, which is fair enough with the way they're with, with the way they're booking Lashley. But then, just as Lashley was celebrating, we would hear this.
That's right, everyone. Everyone's favourite old man in Goldberg is back. Yes, he basically come down to the ring, got in Lashley's face and says, after he laughs at him a few times, says, I'm next. Which basically confirmed what had been reported a few days earlier, that the match for SummerSlam will be Bobby Lashley versus Goldberg for the WWE Championship, which also happens to be the second time this year that Goldberg will have challenged for the championship, having uh, come up short against Drew McIntyre at the Thunderdome Royal Rumble. Yeah. Now, after the WWE Championship match, we switched to the Raw Women's Championship match. Yes, we do, as Rhea Ripley puts her title on the line against Charlotte Flair. Ah. We kind of suspected that this was going to be a match where the fans would be the most vocal, kind of. And it turns out they were. Yes, because here we had chance of let's go Rhea, let's go Charlotte. But I think the ones that got the largest chance were we want Becky. And Charlotte Blair took offense to this and showed the middle finger to the fan. Which seems to have landed her in a bit of bother backstage. Yes. But for the last couple of weeks leading up to this match, both Lipley and Charlotte seem to have been targeting each other's knees. Yeah. And that would play an ultimate role in how this match would work, would go. Overall, considering that... This was essentially a rematch of the Hell in a Cell match, which ended stupidly, I may add. I thought that this was an okay match. Yeah. Uh, Considering what was supposed to happen at WrestleMania last year, I still think that they could have, it probably should have gone the other way. But considering what else would happen, it makes more sense that it did go the way it did. So let's see if we can go through some of the key moments. Let's see. So, after a relatively contested match, we literally went for the red tide, only to be countered into a DVT. Then we had a second low. Natural selection. Then Ripley would take a leaf out of Brock Lesnar's book with a German yeah. suplex. Hit in the back of uh, Sarah, her head and then lower him out of the limb. Flair would ram Ripley's head into a turnbuckle several times. But as Charlotte would get more and more frustrated towards the end, then she would trap the Ripley's leg in between the uh, corner post of her lane and the steel steps. Kicking it in the causing more damage to rear Can I just ask? Here. Yes. How is Ripley ac- accidentally on purpose, whatever you want to call it, hit and Charlotte with the top of your announce table a disqualification <laughs> and that's not That would be logical as the damage was done Charlotte Flair sent Ripley back into the ring and locked in the figure eight. Yes, which uh, Rhea Ripley was ultimately forced 
to submit to, which gave Charlotte, which would give Charlotte her thirteenth WWE. Well, WWE, but 14th overall, if you want to count. Because tech, because for some bizarre reason, WWE have decided to take Charlotte's two NXT Women's Championship wins out of her resume, which means, which means five times Raw Women's Champion, five times SmackDown Women's Champion, and the last year's champion. But, but however, on the next night on Raw... Yes, next, this would prove to be one of Charlotte's shorter reigns as women's champion, because the next night on Raw, during the championship celebration... Rhea said she wanted another opportunity. Adam Pierce, after Charlotte had said she could beat the Ripley any time, came out and made the match official, which made event it all. Now, we all knew that uh, to have that match as the main event of Raw, they weren't going to do that until, unless something big happened. One of those possibilities was a return of Becky Lynch. Another possibility is what ultimately ended up happening. So, Charlotte ultimately gets herself to Ripley disqualified by hitting Ripley with the uh, Women's Championship. Ripley, not too happy about this, attacks Charlotte and hits her with a left tide outside the ring and, and rolls her back in. However, as she's doing this, Nikki Ash's music hits. And she runs down with a referee in tow, hands the briefcase over to the referee, and we heard this announcement. Nikki, Nikki, almost a superhero, is cashing in a money in the bank contract. Climbs up to the top rope, hits the... Uh, the and gets the pinfall to become the new... Oh, women's champion. Also, also, also making this a third time that Charlotte has been cast in on. Since? Since the creation of the uh, women's money in the bank cloud and that. In fact, the only reason, person who hasn't been cast in on apart from uh, South was Nia Jax, and the only reason that no one was cast in on last year was because the match was actually for the championship due to Becky Lynch going off and becoming the mum. Yes. Now we move on to the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, and my colleague will now say who the participants for that match. Yes, in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, we had. Ricochet, John Morrison, the bro in Little, Drew McIntyre, AO Kevin Owens, Kin Nakamura, Biggie, and He's not the mustard, he's a very naughty boy. In Seth Rollins. This match was around 17 minutes in length. And just like every other ladder match, we had spots left, right and centre. Including one where Seth Rollins had one Kevin Owens through ladders. Yes, that would be towards the uh, end of the match. However... Fairly early on in the match, Drew McIntyre was taken out by uh, Jinder Mahal when uh, 
Mahort Henchman in uh, Shanky Sh- and Veer. Yeah, it's not the uh, Sin Brothers. No, because they're gone. Were to attack him and then they would attack through with a chair and basically carry him out. Which, considering the uh, stipulation that was on the air in the cell not through through and lastly, it's a good way of taking McIntyre out of a match. Riddle would uh, 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 Ricochet climbed the ladder Ricochet would push over the ladder and Riddle would uh, jump onto the other competitors Riddle would then steal a move From me by hitting an RKO on everyone Whilst uh, Kevin Owens decided to stun everyone. Rollins would then hit the stomp onto Nakamura. Ouch. Which then led to what we said earlier about Kevin Owens climbing the ladder. And but Seth uh, pulling him off and power bombing him through a ladder that was laid between the apron and the announce table. Beth would then climb this ladder here, thinking that uh, he had the match won. Only for Big E to hit the big ending from halfway up the ladder. Clearing, clearing, clearing the way for Big E to climb the ladder and unhook the briefcase to become Mr. Money in the Bank. And now he had some storage space for all his pancakes. <laughs> yes. So, our main event match is for the Universal Championship as the head of the table, Roman Reigns, puts his stuff on the line against the radar superstar, Edge. Yes. However, before this, we had a, let's just say, slightly pissed off Seth Rollins backstage, who, as we will get to when we go through this match, we had not quite seen the last of. No. So here we had, we had Reigns would go for a spear on the outside by Edge, only for Edge to move out the way. Orange sent himself through the barricade, and Edge would hit the spear on Reigns for the rest of the barricade. Yep. Yeah. Then we had moves like the execution, and well, and the choke. There's a, there's a lot to dissect in this match, considering it was over half an hour long. Was he in a referee spot where the referee got knocked down? Yes. The referee for this match, or so should we say, the starting referee for this match was Charles Robinson. One of the senior officials. The Reigns would hit Superman Punch onto Edge, who would uh, go into the referee. Uh, when the referee was down, a frustrated Reigns would use a broken piece, or try to use a broken piece of his steel chair, which Edge has used in recent weeks, to put Edge in a cross face, only for Edge to reverse and apply the submission on Reigns instead. Of course, this move was made famous by he who must not be named. Yes, not gonna mention his name. At this point, with the referee down, the Usos try to get involved, but were oh, but were stopped by the Mysterios, which is why we think that their little anger over the tag team titles isn't over. No. But then, pissed off, 
that he had not won the Money in the Bank ladder match. And for the past few weeks on SmackDown has been basically saying that Edge jumped the line. Seth Rollins decides to show up and perform and hit Edge with a uh, kick. Yes. This left both Roman Reigns and Edge laying. Part of me thought that Big E might come running down. However, that has been saved for a different occasion. Yes. Edge would uh, Edge would then hit a spear onto uh, Roman Reigns, and had the match won, but the referee was not quite fast enough to get there. Oh, yeah. Thus, then Seth appears back on the apron, only for Edge to uh, basically send him flying. This slight distraction allowed Roman to hit a spear on two Edge, allowing him to retain the Universal Championship. There was a slight stare down between uh, Rollins and Reigns, with Rollins saying if it wasn't for me, he would be champion. I'm, I deserve the next shot. Only for Ed to get up and basically say, you son of a bitch, and go straight after Seth, which, again, is... Setting up for a SummerSlam match. Yes, yeah, so the women match is, of course, going to be Seth Rollins. But then, Paul Heyman decides to hand Roman Reigns a microphone. And then Roman Reigns proceeds to say, <laughs> Now the whole world can acknowledge me. Well, Roman, we hate to be the ones to break it to you, but if you want the whole world to acknowledge you, you first have to acknowledge this. That's right, Roman. John Cena is back. And he is coming for you. And to... How do we say this? No, let's just let the man himself say what he thinks. Roman Reigns is an arrogant, self-absorbed, overhyped, overprotected, overexposed gimmick who's not as over as he says he is. And that, that is coming from me. <laughs> 